Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, and thanks for joining us on this Monday morning. My name is Andrea, and I'm our um, I'm a customer support manager here at Blackthorn, specifically for our payments application. And I am super excited to present our October payments release to everyone on the call today. Um, I'll go ahead and paste a, a copy or a link to our release notes for this version in the chat so that uh, if you'd like to take a look at uh, these while we're going through the call today, um, presentation is going to be loosely based on these release notes. It's a great source of information uh, for, for all of our payments releases. All right, and so just jump jump right in here. Let's look at what uh, our plan agenda is for the call. So our um, first section we'll cover is related to upgrade um, instructions and considerations. So this is a super um, big release for us on the on the payment side. We have several new features that uh, are both both the team internally and many of our current customers have been very excited um, about knowing knowing that they're coming. Um, so but the first thing we'll talk about is just upgrade best practices and some considerations uh, specific to this particular version of payments. And then we'll talk through our new features, um, which include our phase one of our Spreely integration. Um, we also have uh, a couple of large features that are uh, new and specific to customers using our Stripe billing integration. And um, for, for those of you not familiar with Stripe Billing or maybe you're not, you're not using it, um, it is a suite of tools to help companies of all sizes automate and optimize um, their recurring billing as well as one-off invoices. Um, it's a very robust feature set that, that we, uh, we offer. We have an integration with, with Stripe Billing. Um, so those two new features are Stripe prices um, Stripe now supports adding uh, one-time prices to subscriptions in addition to recurring prices. So I'll demo that and show you what, uh, what it looks like to use a one-time price from an opportunity in Salesforce and add that to a subscription. Um, and the other large Stripe billing new feature is uh, our Stripe subscription schedules. So this feature gives you the ability to automate changes to subscriptions over time using uh, a schedule. So I'll describe an example use case and then show you how to build a subscription schedule from, from our uh, payments app inside of Salesforce. Then after we go through our new features, we will uh, talk through enhancements and new fields in this package, um, as well as any bug fixes that were included. And then um, finally, we'll go through questions. Of course, if you have questions as we're going through these topics, um, feel free to throw those in the in the chat. If I don't happen to see them while we're on the topic, then we can kind of circle back at the end and cover any any questions. All right, upgrade instructions and considerations. So the first thing that we uh, would encourage you to do is to review our October 2020 release notes. Our QA team puts a lot of care and effort into putting these together for each release so that you know exactly what is going into um, this, this new version and how it might affect your current configuration. Um, then you will upgrade to payments version 5.1. So 5.1 is the um, October release. And as always, we recommend that you upgrade to a, a newly refreshed sandbox. And um, this just gives you an opportunity to run through all of your day-to-day -day processes and any custom configuration that you might have just to make sure that it, everything still works as expected um, before you upgrade your production org. It's just a, a best practice in general. For Sharp customers specifically, our version 5.1 relies on the latest Stripe API version. Um, and I'll pause there for a second and just um, jump over to show you how, how to, first of all, tell what version of the Stripe API you're using and how to upgrade if, if you need to do so. So you do this within the Stripe dashboard. Um, when you log into Stripe, you, you'll notice uh, you've got your menus on the left-hand side. I'm sure you're used to seeing those. Um, you wanna make sure that you are not toggled into test test mode or um, view test data. Make sure this toggle is gray and not orange. And then you'll go to this developer's menu um, 
kind of towards the bottom of that list of options. And then when, when you get to that developer's um, page, you, you're going to see uh, one of two versions of uh, this, this screen, these screenshots I have below. So if you are not on the latest version of Stripe's API, you'll see something similar to this first image where you've got multiple API versions listed and an older version will have the default uh, label. You'll also see that there's an upgrade available button um, over on the right hand side of the page. And if you are on the latest version, you uh, would see something similar. Oh, toggled my, my little toolbar. You'll see something similar to that bottom image where uh, the latest version is also your default version. You also will see that there's not an upgrade available uh, button on that page. Um, so once you upgrade your API version in your Stripe dashboard, Stripe gives you a 72 hour window to roll back that upgrade. Um, and this is important. The reason that I'm, I'm pointing this out is because I, I would urge you to ensure that any other direct Stripe integrations that you might have, um, you, you want to verify that those integrations are compatible with the newest version of the Stripe API. Because once you upgrade in your dashboard, you can't, um, after that 72 hour window, you can't roll back. So uh, please make sure that any other integrations you have with Stripe can use that API version prior to, to doing that upgrade in your um, Stripe dashboard. This was a major release for, uh, for Stripe. It was, a, there were a lot of changes to their API and many of which um, were not backwards compatible. Um, we do have a link to Stripe's API change log in our release notes if you're curious to know exactly what changes they have implemented in the newest version of their API. All right, back up here. Oh, look, spoilers. OK. Back to our upgrade instructions and considerations. Um, the last step that I have listed here that you'll want to make sure to take care of uh, right after you um, right after you upgrade to version 5.1, there are a couple of things that you will need to do in our Blackthorn Payments Admin tab. Um, specifically, if you are interested in our Spreely integration or you are a Stripe billing customer who's interested in one of the new features that we'll look at today. Um, so just to give you an idea of what, what that looks like, um, we have this Blackthorn Payments Admin tab, gives you some um, just some easy admin controls for Spreely specifically. Uh, when you go to this Payments Admin tab, you would want to go to the metadata update section. And then there is a, a button here at the bottom to add uh, pick list values. And so this essentially adds the Spreely option as a provider for payment gateway. And when I show you Spreely here in just a moment, you'll, you'll see exactly what, what I'm talking about and why this step is needed. And then um, also in the same section on the admin tab, but in the Stripe billing section, uh, we have a couple of buttons we need you to, to go in and, and click. So uh, one is deploy Stripe billing and the other is assign subscription record type. So with subscription schedules, we've got a new record type, which we'll talk about here shortly, um, as well as some additional fields and page layouts. So these two buttons uh, would be needed to, to make sure that those record types and uh, additional, additional new um, fields are uh, in your org. And then also one other step for Stripe billing customers specifically. Um, so on the prices object, you would want to go in um, through the object manager, um, go to page layouts, find the um, page layout or page layouts that you're currently using for your plans prices object. I'll explain. Um, I'll explain the the name change from plans to prices here shortly. Um, but we have a Previously, we had a requirement property on the interval field on, on plans. Um, because we now support one-time prices, that interval field should no longer be required. So there's a step needed just so that, to remove that requirement so that you can use one-time prices. OK, so that's the quick list of our um, upgrade instructions and considerations. Again, I, I urge you to um, review our release notes if you need some additional information on any of these items or um, 
we've got that documented in in great detail. Okay, so let's talk about Spreely. Um, this is one that we've been very excited about for quite a while. It's been on the roadmap. And so, uh, so what is what is Spreely for those of you who may not be familiar? So Spreely is a service that allows you to securely store or vault credit cards um, and then use them to transact against a broad range of um, supported payment gateways. So Spreely currently supports 120 uh, plus payment, uh, individual payment gateways. Um, so why does this matter? Why is this a, a big deal for, uh, for us? Um, so, you know, this is beyond Stripe, beyond Authorize.net. This gives our customers um, so many more gateway options. Um, you can now process payments from Salesforce using any of the payment gateways supported by Spreely. Um, really for us, building an integration even to a single payment gateway is a significant undertaking. So with Spreely, we can, we've been able to integrate through their single API and then Spreely is able to connect um, to all of those other individual gateways. So it gives us some um, uh, expanded options for supporting additional gateways or for supporting uh, more customer needs and use cases. So how does it work? So I will, um, I'm actually going to show you how it works and show you uh, how to not only create your gateway, but also to create a payment method and charge a transaction from Salesforce. And so a couple of things to note with Spreely, uh, it, you do not have to have your own Spreely account, but you do need to have um, an account with that payment gateway um, that you, you like to, to use to process transactions. Um, Blackthorn support or our customer success team will need to uh, set up your Spreely environment. There's a, a key that we'll need to provide to you to, that you'll use in Salesforce um, to connect to your Spreely gateway. Um, and right now, payment methods can be added through the virtual terminal only. Um, Paylink and events uh, support are, are up next on our roadmap. So this is sort of phase one for, for our Spreely integration. And um, trans transactions can be captured also through the virtual terminal. You can also capture a transaction from just an open transaction record in Salesforce or an auto processed transaction. So scheduled for a later date. So I'm gonna jump over to Salesforce and I've got um, my payment gateways tab um, open. And you can see I've already, already have one Spreely test gateway here, but I want to show you what it would look like uh, if you were to add a new one. So I just click the new button on the payment gateway tab. I'm going to, going to give it a name. We do not support webhooks for any of the, the Spreely uh, payment gateways currently, so you don't need a webhook label. Need to define a default currency as well as the default country. For a provider, you would need to select Spreely. And so that step that um, I just went through where you needed to go to the admin tab and um, deploy new pick list values, uh, that step is what will add the Spreely option to the provider um, pick list. Uh, Spreely, uh, Spreely payment methods do not create a payment gateway customer record. Um, you can connect them to accounts and contacts, but uh, just you won't need to define relationship settings because um, they do not apply in our payments package for Spreely. If you're connecting to the test, test gateway, you would uh, check test mode here. And also if it's gonna be your default gateway, you could choose default here as well. Um, and then moving down to this gateway information section, you uh, don't need to populate any of these gateway keys or user um, IDs or email for these first three fields. But what you do need is a Spreely environment, environment key. So that is something that Blackthorn will provide to you. So um, if you're interested in, in using Spreely or testing Spreely, uh, get in contact with our support team. We can get you set up and provide those keys for you to, to use when creating this payment gateway record. Um, I'm not gonna say this because I already have an existing Spreely gateway. I'll just back out of here and we'll just take a look at my 
already connected gateway. So once you've populated all of those values and you have an environment key, we also have a new button on the payment gateway record called Creates Freely Gateway. So you'll click that Creates Freely Gateway button. And then this is the step where you would find your, uh, your gateway amongst the list of these supported gateways. Um, and depending on which gateway you plan to use, you will um, have to, to provide some additional detail. So just click on the random one here. And you'll see that um, for JetPay, it requires a login and a region. These are uh, either credentials or keys that you can find within your that gateway account that you'll need to provide to connect that successfully to Spreedly. Like just choose a different one. It just really depends on which gateway, um, you know, wh whatever options show up will be dependent on which gateway you select. So once you've chosen your gateway and you uh, put in these additional details that are needed, you can click Create. I'm just connected to the Spreely test gateway. Um, but once you do connect successfully, you will see that the Spreely configure gateway um, field has been populated with that gateway, that gateway that you have just connected to. So once you've done that step, you are ready to create payment methods to uh, use, you know, use those payment methods to capture transactions. So I'm actually going to go to an account that I have um, where, where I have the virtual terminal. And again, right now, um, you can only create payment methods using the virtual terminal, not, um, not from PayLink or DocumentLink or um, not even from the payment methods tab. Um, creating a payment method here will uh, we'll tokenize that payment method, send it to, you know, send it to Spreely, we get the token back and then create the payment method record. I'm going to switch to uh, my action to new payment method. Can see that the Spreely test gateway has uh, is pre-selected. I have it marked as the default currently. You can see that it's related to this Blackthorn account that I have um, virtual terminal on. Right now, you'll see options for credit cards or ACH, but we only support uh, credit card uh, credit cards with Spreely. We don't support ACH um, quite yet. And so then you would want to. Just fill in your credit card details as normal. I'm just going to use a credit uh, test credit card. And I'll just fill in the details. That's the default payment method. Click create here. Okay, see my payment method was created. If I take a look at that payment method, it's going to look very similar to what you're used to seeing in uh, Salesforce, where we've got a payment method um, with just some uh, some information to help identify it uh, while remaining PCI compliant uh, with what we store here. Um, you'll see again, we, we don't create a payment gateway customer, but this is connected to the account. So you'll see that as a, an option on the related list of the account. And then you can see we've got a payment method ID and a fingerprint that was returned from Spreely. And so if I jump back over to my virtual terminal and I want to use this card that I just uh, created to capture a transaction, I can switch back over to, let me just do this, switch back over to choose the new single charge option. Just refresh my page. Okay related to Blackthorn. Okay, and then here's my new card that I had just created through the virtual terminal. Just gonna put in a dollar amount and then uh, you have the same option. So you can capture, you can authorize a transaction or you can auto process, which means schedule it to be captured on a later date. I'm just gonna capture, capture one now. Okay, see so a transaction successful message. And then when we go to this transaction record, you'll see that it is completed and captured. And that we have, um, you know, a payment method ID here. Um, and everything has gone through successfully. Um, you can also refund transactions from um, freely transactions directly from Salesforce. Uh, you can also create open transactions and use the capture button um, 
as well as using the virtual terminal. But again, for payment methods, you have to use the virtual terminal um, for the time being as part of this phase one uh, to, to tokenize those cards with Spreely. All right. So what you've just seen is likely a very familiar process for you, um, especially if you use the virtual terminal. And that's really the, the beauty here and the, and the goal is just um, providing an easy and consistent and experience in Salesforce no matter what gateway is processing your transactions. So um, should should look very, very similar to, to what you're used to, but it's great because we can we can now support a broader range of payment gateways. And again, if you're interested in um, our Spreely integration, please get in touch with us and we can uh, help you get, get set up to, to test or use you know, those additional supported gateways. Um, I also will, will be sending out this slide deck um, after the call and we'll have a link in the previous slide to all the, the supported payment gateways um, Spreely offers. Moving on to our next um, new feature. So this one is specific to Stripe billing. Um, and it is support of prices. So what are prices and what happened to plans? Um, prices are the new plans. Um, so you'll see in Salesforce, for those of you who are current Stripe billing customers, that the plans object appears to no longer be there, but it is, it's just been really relabeled to prices. And so um, to just explain the reasoning behind this, uh, a short while ago, Stripe only supported the use of recurring pricing models on subscriptions, um, they referred to those as plans. Um, and our, our object used to be called plans, um, which makes sense because subscriptions are recurring by nature, um, but they have recently afforded more flexibility um, by letting you add a one-time price to a subscription as well. Um, so they have replaced their plans object um, with prices. And so, um, in our package in Salesforce, the API name is gonna be the same. I'm sorry, yes, the API name is the same. So if you, you're using it in a current automation, that should still be fine. Um, but we've relabeled uh, plans to prices. And um, you, all of your existing records will still be there. They will still work properly when used from Salesforce. Um, but what are the, so what are the use cases? Why would we, why would we want to add a one-time product to a subscription? And, and what does that even really look like? Um, so thinking through any possible scenario where, where you might want to do this, um, specifically think about like, what if you have, you know, maybe a, a, a one-time setup fee that's related to a subscription, um, or you need to include a one-time add-on to, to a subscription. Well, prices give you the flexibility of, of doing that. Um, and what happens is if you add a one-time price to a subscription, well, Stripe will just, um, Stripe won't add it to obviously the, the recurring subscription. Uh, Stripe just adds it to um, essentially the next subscription invoice that, that gets generated. So how does this work? Um, I'm also going to show you from Salesforce how to create and use a one-time price with a subscription here shortly. Um, I'll show you how to uh, create create the, the price record itself, um, how to add that one-time price as an opportunity product, and then um, how to push that to, to Stripe to create a subscription. So if I jump back over to Salesforce and I'm going to come to this uh, prices tab. So again, this used to be called plans. You'll see now that it's called prices, but you, you should still see all of your, um, your recurring prices on uh, within this object. Um, you can see the two that are showing up here currently. They're both recurring. You can see that because I've named them recurring, but also they have an interval. So uh, for Stripe billing, the interval defines what um, what frequency they're they're built in, whether that's daily, weekly, annually. These particular plans are monthly. I'm sorry, prices. <laughs> um, and then uh, you can see there's an interval count. So this means that this you know this price is forty dollars, and it's billed um, each month. So if I wanted to add a one-time price into the mix, um, again, if you if you use Stripe billing and you've added a a plan to Salesforce uh, before. This is gonna be very similar with a couple of distinct differences. So 
I'm going to add a setup fee. And um, because it is a one time price and not a recurring, I'm going to leave interval blank. So this is the we went through in the beginning, you have to remove the required property from interval. This is why, because you can't um, send, try and send a one-time price to Stripe with, uh, with any type of interval in this field. So you leave that to none. You would tie this to one of your existing Salesforce products. So I'm gonna tie this to a setup fee. Uh, the amount for this, I'm just gonna put at $100. I'm gonna check this push to Stripe checkbox so that when I save it, it sends uh makes that call out to stripe to get the price id and um gonna mark it as active of course um again this is a one-time price so the usage is not applicable here i'm gonna leave this blank billing scheme i'm gonna change this to per unit because this is a quantity based billing so um we would want the pricing based on um each unit um, interval count, again, this is tied to uh, interval um, and recurring billing. We're going to leave that blank since this is one time. Uh, tiers, not applicable in this case because it's not recurring. Trial period days, going to leave that blank as well. And then usage type should um, default to licensed. And so um, that's, what, that's what we want for this type of product. So once you've configured your price, you can um, go ahead and save that. And because I had that push to Stripe checkbox checked when I created the new record. I'm just going to do a refresh. I should have a, there we go. Yeah. So I've gotten a price ID back from Stripe. And so this indicates that that price has been created and it can now, can now be used. So if I jump over to use that price, I'm going to create a subscription from an opportunity. And um, what I'm going to do is add uh, let's say I have this one time setup fee and I'm going to, um, I want to that one time fee to be billed immediately. Um, and then I want to set this up to where the recurring plan um, is going to, you know, uh, is, is all in the same opportunity. So um, my first step would be to add, add products to the opportunity. And um, let's see. Okay, so I'll just go. So here's my setup fee. And here is one of my uh, recurring products that I have. I'm gonna click next. Okay, here's where you choose the price. So products can have multiple prices associated to them. So for different pricing strategies. So um, when you choose a product, you have to choose a price. So this is the setup fee. I'm going to choose um, the setup fee. This is the price that I just set up for this uh, one-time product. And then I'm going to use the standard plan with this um, SAS product, this test product they have. This is an important step. So you choose a product type um, for a setup fee, a one, or I'm sorry, a, any type of one-time price. You want to set the product type to one-time. And the um, recurring would be plan, because this is a recurring plan. And then uh, the other required field set a quantity. Right. And then again, you, you'll see sales price here. This is more so for uh, the reporting in uh, Salesforce specifically. And um, it doesn't actually control what price uh, it gets tied to these products once we push them to Stripe. That's all controlled by the, that amount that we set on the price itself. Um, but this, yeah, so this is more so for a Salesforce side reporting and that requirement. Okay, so once I've added my two products, I'm going to save those and see that they've been populated here. And then I'm going to look down at the Stripe billing section on the opportunity. So um, there are a few fields uh, in this section that can determine how, um, how this gets pushed to Stripe as a new subscription. Um, so I've got some item, some uh, values pre-populated here, but um, you need a customer. So this is the payment gateway customer. So this is the Stripe customer record that you are going to tie the subscription to. Just chosen an existing customer. If you wish to apply a coupon to this subscription, you could populate that um, in this field. Um, I have this set up to send an invoice that's going to be due, you know, 15 days after the issue date. Uh, other option is to charge automatically. This is all existing functionality, by the way, just, just kind of walking you through what this would look like for those that are not familiar 
with um, strike billing. Um, you can choose an existing payment method if you are charging a subscription automatically. Um, but since we're going to send an invoice uh, to the customer with the link to pay, we're not going to add a payment method. Um, this is a new field um, that uh, is, this is new with the Stripe API. And some of you have maybe already seen um, some, some errors related to this parameter, but they've changed uh, prorate to proration behavior. So um, this is defaulted to create prorations. And, and if you have it, um, have this proration behavior field set to create prorations, um, when you push push subscriptions to Stripe or you um, make changes to a subscription, um, you can dictate whether or not you run that proration logic. Um, so I'm going to leave this to create prorations um, in this case. Um, the subscription field would stay blank when we push the subscription to Stripe from this opportunity. Uh, you will see that a, a record get ID gets populated in this field um, to link the subscription to the opportunity. Um, backdate start date. So this field can be used if you want to start your uh, subscription in the past. Again, this, this was here um, prior to this prices um, the prices functionality, but um, I just want to explain how, how I'm setting this up so you understand what behavior to expect. So um, I've set this up just to the official start date of the subscription. Was, it's going to be October 15th. This just gives you the ability to set it in the past if the subscription should have started earlier, then you've created it. Um, and then so this, this field is actually new for the opportunity, the billing cycle anchor. So uh, this determines when the first full invoice goes out and then um, what day of the month it'll go out in this case um, thereafter. So we've got the first invoice going out on November 1st. And then, um, you know, every subsequent invoice is going to go out on the first of the month after this as well. If we left this blank, it would just default to the current day. Um, I'm not going to apply a trial in this case um, or a memo. So I'm going to leave this blank. We have this push to Stripe checkbox. So this is the uh, typically the way that we would send a, an opportunity uh, create a subscription from Stripe, create a subscription to send a Stripe from an opportunity. We have a new button I wanted to show you guys on the opportunity and it's called create subscription. And it's the same functionality, um, but it is um, just gives you uh, kind of a, a different interface. Um, so this is just confirming that we want to create a subscription from our opportunity um, October webinar, which is this, the name of our opportunity. When I do that, it's taking those opportunity products that I configured and it's creating a subscription using them. So I didn't get any errors. That's a good sign. <laughs> um, now the page is reloaded. You can see that we have a subscription record that's populated. I'll go ahead and click on that. All right, and this uh, we have a subscription ID. So it's been created successfully in Stripe, um, but if you look at the subscription items, we've just got the recurring plan. Um, so uh, what, is, what does that mean? We added a one-time product. Um, let me show you what this looks like in Stripe. I'm going to jump over to my developer tab and my Stripe um, dashboard that I have open. And I'm going to look at our subscriptions. OK, and then um, it's going to be this, this top subscription that I just created. You can see that uh, it started. October 15th, and that I've got my SAS plan. You can see that our upcoming invoice on November 1st has our um, SAS product, that's $60 a month. So where did the one-time price go? Well, it's it's on this, um, this scheduled invoice. So um, if I click into this invoice, which hasn't gone out yet, it, it's gonna go out in an hour. Stripe has a one hour buffer when you create an invoice. Um, and then when it gets automatically set out to give you a chance to make any changes. And then um, looking at this invoice, you'll see that um, I've got, a, because I, I added a um, the proration flag, um, it's kind of charged the customer for that period um, between when the this, this subscription I started, like on the 15th, that's what I defined, and then the first. So you have a prorated amount for like a partial partial month before the first full invoice on November 1st. And then here's our setup fee. So um, that's where that one-time 
product goes. And the same as if you were to add a one-time price in the middle of a subscription. So it's essentially just giving you a way to add it and then um, it gets billed on that, whatever invoice is going out next for that subscription. Um, so that gives you an easier option to, to add these one-time prices. And uh, instead of having to do like a, a one-off invoice that's not tied to a subscription or would go out at a different frequency. All right, and so that is, those are one-time prices. Right now, um, this is uh, fully supported so you can create uh, prices in Salesforce. You can create them in Stripe. They will sync over through the, the webhooks um, as well as if you have, um, if you create subscriptions with a price in Stripe, those will sync over through the webhooks Salesforce and you'll, you'll see that those same subscription, I'm sorry, the same prices are tied to that, uh, the subscription invoices. Let's jump back over to, all right, so that's prices. So um, that's a, one, one thing that has been um, long awaited by several of our Stripe billing customers. And then um, our other Stripe billing, our other new, new feature, our last new feature that we'll talk about today in this release is uh, Stripe billing subscription schedules. So what, what is a subscription schedule? So, um, Subscription schedules give you greater flexibility in managing a subscription's life cycle by providing options to automate anticipated changes over time with a subscription. So for those um, current Stripe billing customers, uh, they will recognize this as a pain point because um, you, while you can make a change to a, an existing subscription, um, such as downgrading a customer's plan and product or adding or removing a coupon at any time. Um, up until recently, you didn't have a way to schedule those changes for a future date. Like you could do them in real time and they would take effect and run proration logic, um, but they had to be done manually. You had to manage those changes manually. So um, subscription schedules give you options to, to, to you know, create a schedule up front to manage uh, a subscription in what they call phases. Um, so what are the, what's a potential use case for something like this? Um, let's say that you are offering a promotional price for a new customer, for any of your new customers, and that you offer a discounted um, price for the first three months of their 12 month subscription. And then after that, uh, you would apply the regular price for the, the final nine months um, of that subscription. Um, you can configure this up front now with the use of subscription schedules uh, when the subscription is created so that you're not trying to track, okay, when do I need to make this, this change for the customer? So I want to quickly <laughs> demo that as well from Salesforce so you know what that looks like. And so we have a new object in, um, in Salesforce and it's called subscription schedules. Um, so that, this is where you would start. Uh, the first thing you want to do is create the new schedule. And really the only thing that is absolutely required to save one of these um, initially is a payment gateway customer. So that's your start customer that we're going to tie the schedule to. Um, I'm just going to populate that and save the record. So we have quite a lot of options on the schedule itself. Um, you can, uh, this first section, will give you details about the current phase that's in effect for this schedule. Um, I'm going to leave these fields blank because they will be populated by Stripe once we have pushed this new schedule to, um, to Stripe. So um, this next section is settings. And um, I, what I'm going to do here is very similar to setting up a, a regular subscription where I'm going to define a billing method. So I want to send out invoices for this particular subscription schedule. and um, I'm not gonna add a payment method because I'm sending an invoice. And then I want those invoices to be due 15 days after they have been created. Um, billing cycle anchor. So just like we saw in opportunities, you can control like when, um, when you would like the invoices to, to go out every billing period. So in this case, I am just gonna choose a phase start. So whatever the date of the first phase, um, whatever that date is, that will dictate what the billing cycle uh, anchor is for this, um, this schedule. And then what's uh, unique about subscription schedules is you can actually define an end behavior, which you can't currently do with regular subscriptions. So 
um, let's say you you are configuring an annual, you know, a 12 month subscription, um, and you can decide what what you want to do. What do you what would you like to do after those phases of your subscription end? Do you want to release it from the schedule and just let them continue to to bill indefinitely until you manually cancel the subscription? Um, or do you want to uh, just cancel it outright? So let's say customer is contracted for 12 months and um, you just want to make sure that at, when we hit that 12 months that the customer is no longer billed. Um, in this case, I am going to choose the cancel option. And then we have uh, another section, schedule details. Um, and so you can see on this section, it says that automatically do not edit. So uh, we say that because none of these are actionable from Salesforce. These are just storing dates that are synced over from Stripe once we push this to, to Stripe. So go ahead and save those changes that I've configured. Um, and again, we have detailed documentation on how to do these things that I'm showing you. Um, I know we're going through it kind of quickly, but uh, for different scenarios and different use cases, we have some um, we have some documentation specifically on um, subscription schedules that you can reference if you're trying to figure out how to do this in your own context. Okay, so once I have the schedule, now I've got to configure the phases. Okay, so if you look at the bottom of the page here, there's a subscription schedules phases um, related list. And so I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to create the first phase. This is where the new record types come into play. Because I'm not creating a standalone subscription, I'm going to choose the subscription schedule phase. So this is our first phase. This is the phase where we are going to configure that promo price for the first three months for the subscription. So um, by uh, I, I'm only adding a single line item to the subscription, so I'm just going to put it in this price. Um, if you have multiple line items, you can um, you, you would leave this field blank and then add add uh, additional line items to this phase. But to keep it simple, I'm just going to, for this use case, we're just gonna use this promo plan as the only item on the subscription. And um, I'm not gonna set um, billing method or days until due because I'm gonna let the schedule dictate those because we set the send invoice um, and 15 days until due on the schedule. You can define, um, a coupon if you'd like for the specific phases so maybe you want a coupon this phase but on the next phase you want um, a different coupon or no coupon you can use that on on a particular phase and the only other thing that's really essential other than a price is iterations so this kind of determines how long this phase is going to last this promo plan um, price is set up as a monthly plan so I want this monthly plan to last for three months before this phase ends and the next phase begins. I'm going to use three as my iteration. And then um, I'm going to leave these dates blank and let Stripe populate those once I push to Stripe, once I push to Stripe. Um, and then you also can control um, proration behavior. So if there are changes during this phase, do you want them to be prorated changes or do you want them to just take effect on the next uh, billing invoice. I'm going to leave this for create corrections. All right, I'll go ahead and save this first phase. So again, that's my first three months at my discounted promotional plan. And then I'm going to create a second phase for the other nine months of my 12-month uh, plan. And so what I want for this, this second uh, phase of the subscription schedule is to use it to, I guess, move the customer to the standard plan from the promotional plan that they uh, were on prior. Um, again, I'm gonna let the schedule dictate some of these details, but if you do set them on the phase itself, it will override the behavior from the, the schedule. Um, for this one, um, I'm gonna put nine as my iteration, because again, we want this to, this phase to last for nine months. And um, again, I'm going to leave these dates blank. I'm going to let all the other uh, values just stay as the, the default and save that second phase. So now you can see we've got two phases and um, with, for a total of 12 months. So I'm going to push this to Stripe. Okay. 
And so now you can see some of these blank fields now have values. <laughs> and we, again, and it, you, you know it's happened successfully because we've got a, a subscription um, or Stripe um, record ID. And, um, and now you can also see in our phases, we've got start dates for each of them. So now just to show you what, what this really looks like in Stripe, if we go to a Stripe dashboard, refresh this and take a look at, this is our subscription schedule that we just pushed to Stripe. Um, so you can see that it's got our um, promotional, it's a $40 promotional plan. But you can also see that there's an update scheduled. So if I just expand this, it kind of gives you, these are all the things that we just configured in Salesforce. So you can see that we've got an update scheduled for January 19th after our three month period is up. You can see that, that um, we are gonna stop charging that promotional plan for $40 a month. And we're gonna start charging $60 a month for the standard plan. Um, and then uh, the second step is we, we're actually gonna cancel the subscription um, at the end of that second phase. Um, so essentially that's, it gives you that capability up front to define um, changes that you anticipate for a subscription. You can of course still make changes to the phases if you wanna link in the phase or maybe you don't wanna cancel it, you just wanna release it from the schedule and let it go. At this time, you would need to make those changes in Salesforce directly. Um, we, right now we don't support bringing um, these scheduled subscriptions over through the webhooks. You can create them in Salesforce. You'd also need to make the changes to those um, schedules in, in webhook, I'm um, sorry, in Salesforce as well. Okay, so that's our uh, subscription uh, schedule feature. And that, um, so that wraps up our new features. And um, I, that was quick. I know that was quite, quite a quick run through. Um, again, we've got more detailed documentation on these, uh, these features. Uh, if you go to our, um, actually the, our release notes are, are on the same, uh, same page as our general documentation. So you can find those in the Stripe billing section. We also have a section specific to Spreely. Um, and if, if there's anybody on the call right now who isn't using Stripe billing, who is interested in trialing uh, Stripe billing and using our integration, you could just um, let us, you can let us know if you wanna throw a comment into the chat or a thumbs up or, or something to indicate that you would like us to, to send you some additional detail about, um, about the trial and um, you know, the requirements from our side if you wanted to start using that, that feature set. Okay, so let's go through enhancements and new fields. Um, we have some new custom settings. So we've got um, that Blackthorn pay trigger settings. Um, and we have added some, some additional settings to, to further give you some control over what can be done in, in Salesforce. Um, the, the first three that, or the three that I really wanna highlight are, are related to the virtual terminal. So uh, before these options, you, kind of had the same this experience that you're seeing from the screenshot where you, uh, when you load a page with a virtual terminal, it defaults to that new single charge action. Um, so now you have the ability to uh, change that and maybe you want when the virtual terminal loads for the default option to be a new payment method instead. Um, so you have a setting that you can enable that will um, make this the, the default setting. Um, you also can disable one or one of uh, the options. So maybe you want your users to only be able to create a new payment method in the terminal, but not you know, process any charges or the opposite if you want them to only be able to use an existing payment method for um, creating a charge, you can disable one or the two of these options and you, they'll only have access to a single option. More details in our release notes on that. Um, so our Blackthorn custom objects, we've added a lot more detail to the descriptions on these. So um, if you look in object manager, any of these objects that you see with this BT stripe prefix or namespace, those are our packaged objects. And if you ever see one, you're not sure what it's for, what purpose it serves, <laughs> you can look um, at the description because um, we've added a lot more context to give you an idea of what the purpose of that, that particular object is in our, in our package. Um, relationship settings. So we've been making a lot of changes to this feature set. Um, you can now um, 
evaluate record types like contact, con, um, contact the counter lead record types when trying to um, find a, a match on, on payment gateway customer. So if you do use custom record types like with um, contacts, for example, and you wanted to only evaluate, uh, find, try and find a match for contacts that are of a certain record type, you can actually add that record type as a in the criteria of the matching rules that are uh, related or that are tied to your contact duplicate rule. Um, we have a enhancement specific to authorize.net. So we've modified our uh, code around uh, API calls to authorize.net. Um, we had a, a few customers that um, were experiencing issues because authorize.net was incorrectly assuming that transactions were duplicates just because they were tied to the same payment gateway customer for the same amount. But they were legitimate charges. So we had to make some changes to our um, on our side to kind of override those default settings and and uh, give you the a little bit more flexibility in um, you know processing those uh, transactions. Uh, we have a few enhancements that are Stripe specific. So for Stripe disputes, we've refactored the dispute logic. Um, and, and really the main difference here is when, when a customer disputed a transaction in the past, um, we would create that dispute record and we would create two refund transactions, uh, one for the original charge and then one for the $15 fee that Stripe charges when someone disputes a record. Um, now all we're doing is bringing in the one refund transaction um, and we just note the payment gateway fee on that refund transaction. And we, the reason we did this is just to, to kind of further align with the way that Stripe handles payouts. They don't treat the fee as a separate line on, on or a separate record on the payout. Um, they just, it's like an inline fee. So, so just another, uh, point to, to help validate and reconcile between your Stripe payout and then our records in Salesforce. Okay, um, we looked at actually looked at these new fields when we were going through the new features for Stripe billing. So we've got uh, the billing cycle anchor first invoice. So this was previously only, uh, this field was only available on the subscription. We have added it to the, uh, the opportunity as well. So it can be utilized from the opportunity. Um, when you're creating a subscription through that route. Um, we've added that create subscription button on the opportunity. And then we've added um, proration behavior in uh, response to Stripe's API change for that. So instead of prorate with yes or no option, proration behavior is the field that replaces that. Again, we've got more detail in the release notes on these items. Oops, going backwards here. Um, so quickly go through the bug fixes um, that were in this package. We are uh, running up on our time. I want to make sure that if anybody has questions, and I, I do see one that we'll address momentarily. Um, we have a little bit of time for that. So um, we have some bug fixes that are applicable to all gateways, regardless of what you, um, wh which one you use. Um, the field paid in full is not populating on invoices once all the conditions were meeting the appropriate criteria. So we have updated, um, made some changes to, to fix this so that the date and time is, is populated appropriately as to when that invoice is paid in full. Um, we also fixed a bug where the, a new payment gateway customer was getting created when you were using Paylink, even though the transaction may have already had a payment gateway customer populated. Um, so this is creating essentially a duplicate payment gateway customer. And it wasn't always, um, it wasn't always obvious because the, the payment gateway customer uh, would generally have the same name as the one that was pre-existing. So we fixed that so that it's using the same, the customer that was already uh, populated on the transaction record. For Stripe, uh, Stripe specifically, um, we fixed the payout lookup and uh, payout information fields on the sales document so that they will continue to populate when a payout is related to a sales document. Um, we also added a fix for disputes to correct an issue where the Salesforce record, the Salesforce dispute record was not being updated with the proper status, specifically when you were accepting, maybe you just accepted a dispute. Um, it wasn't updating immediately um, as it should. So we fixed that issue. 
For Stripe billing, we fix a null pointer error that was occurring when you were pushing a subscription to Stripe from an opportunity. I think this was specifically around um, the, having a coupon in the lookup on the opportunity. We're getting a null pointer error, so we fix that. Um, we also added a fix so uh, error messages would populate. There were some routes where if you create a subscription and it was you're trying to create a subscription in Salesforce and it was missing a certain parameter, um, you weren't getting an error. So it wasn't obvious what uh, what was wrong, but there was something missing. So we have um, adjusted things slightly so that if you are missing something that is required for this new subscription, that you get alerted on screen and there's no mystery surrounding why nothing happened when you tried to push it. Uh, well, get a little trigger happy. And then uh, for Stripe Connect, we had an issue uh, related to transfers to connected accounts where there is an unhandled exception being thrown. Um, so we have, if that affected you in the, in the last packages, um, that, that's been corrected. With a few minutes we have left, um, I'm not known for my, my brevity. So <laughs> I hope we had more time for questions, but it does look like we have one question in the chat. Um, and that question is, does uh, the create subscription automatically show up on the opportunity record? That's a great question. So that um, button will need to be added to your opportunity page layout. So it'll be in the, the mobile or yeah, the mobile actions and, and lightning buttons. Um, if you go to edit your opportunity layout, you just need to add that new button to be able to, to use that. It works again, it works the same way as the push to strike checkbox. Um, but just isn't, you know, a, a nicer experience. I think a lot of customers will use that push to strike checkbox and automation if they automate the, the push and creation of subscriptions. That's a great question. Yes, it will need to be added to the layout. Great. Hope that answers that question. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any, any other questions? Um, in the two minutes that we have we have left, I know it was a lot of information. Um, it was quite a, quite a big release. And um, so and of course we will we will be sending out this this recording and then um, also send out uh, the slide deck I was using if you wanted to read through any of those. Again, I base this on our release notes. Um, so it, a lot of the, uh, if you go through our release notes, a lot of the same content will be there, um, just in more detail in, in the notes. And also, if you guys have any feedback, so we're, we're trying to, you know, make sure that we're doing these webinars on a regular basis for every release for both events and payments. We have our events release uh, webinars tomorrow. Um, and uh, if you have feedback on, on how we should structure these or, um, oh, I think someone unmuted. Is that you, Michael, do you have any questions? Uh, I unmuted, I didn't have any questions, but okay. go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, just uh, if you if you do have feedback, you know, we want to make sure that these are uh, useful for, for anybody who's on the call. And there's, you know, this was a big release, so there's a lot to cover. But if you have feedback, we're, you know, more than happy to, to hear it. And any follow-up questions that you might have after, feel free to, to contact us and we're, we're happy to happy to help. Awesome. So I did all the talking today. Thank you guys for, uh, for joining um, and um, enjoy the rest of your Monday. And again, yeah, let us know, uh, just get, get in touch with us if uh, you're interested in any of these new features or you have any questions, we, are, um, we want you guys to be successful. Thank you so much.